Alright guys, welcome back to JBSR Plays It, and here we are. The Monday Night Football game finished up, eh, well, longer ago than I would have liked. Eh, I thought I was going to film it right after it was done, and then ended up playing Pokemon. That's usually what happens in my life. So anyway, so now, week seven, in the books. And I didn't pick them very well this week. I was eight and seven, so over 500, yeah, but... Um, there are a couple games, and I remember talking about this, where if I had gone against, well, basically the picks that I, my obligation picks, I guess you can call them, I went one and two, and Buffalo's the only team that pulled through. Um, but I knew I was going to get the other two wrong, and then there are a couple other games where I called it. I thought Cleveland had a chance to lose to Jacksonville because I thought it was a, the the most important game of the season for both of these teams. But again, every game now the Jaguars have nothing to play for. They're they're that was it. That was their season. They got their one. You know, now it's a sort of are they going to go one and fifteen, two and fourteen, three and thirteen, four and twelve? It really doesn't matter. So. Now it's just a matter of making sure that they keep Blake Bortles healthy, don't ruin his career. That's what they play for. Um, and what there was... And that San Diego game, not that I would have picked it, but I'm not surprised by that result. Um, you know, in that Houston-Pittsburgh game, I just didn't know what the hell was going to happen. But anyways, let's uh, start up our the uh, the conference championship here against the 49ers. Like I said, Madden is in love with San Francisco. Whatever the hell it is about their team makeup, San Francisco, and they're unbeat. I mean, they're a ninety-seven. They're unbeatable. Uh, my Bills franchise, two straight Super Bowls against the 49ers. They're unfucking stoppable. They um, I like. I mean, I guess the Bills' offensive line just ain't that great, but. Like, the Bills can't stop anybody. I just get sacked every other play. I, granted, I'm playing it on pro difficulty, not rookie, so that might have something to do with it. But still, like, I'm there's not a big gap between pro and rookie. Decent enough, but, you know, instead of putting up, you know, completing 90% of your passes, maybe you're only going to complete 75. That's the big difference for someone who's not very good at it and only barely understands zone coverage. Um, so going into the games, did we... Did I talk about the New England game already? Um, if I did, then this is going to be redundant, but I'm just going to go over it real quick. New England with a close win. Uh, the Jets played good. The Jets are better than their 1-6 and implies. And, I mean, there were a couple of those games where it's like, ugh. But, New England, they're 5-2. and two, But I still don't feel like they're a 12-4 and four team. They, they could with their schedule. I mean, if some of the breaks go their way, they could. Um, I mean, they can enter 7-6 and six going into that final, you know, their final three games and still finish 10-6 and six because it's all three division games and that's where they're going to win. And that's why losing the division game is such a huge deal for them. Um, if I had already talked about them, I'd probably talk about it more. I really just don't remember. And I don't really have a lot to add to this other than Rex Ryan isn't the problem in New York. Um, not entirely. He never put a good offensive coordinator in place. You can claim that Schottenheimer and whoever the hell else he's had there. That Oh, they were really good. Well, no one put the personnel. He had a terrible GM before. And he has a GM just in. They should have done Rex a favor and fired him when they put the new GM in. Again, it wasn't Rex's fault, but the, the team he had from Mangini and from Herm Edwards was a pretty good club. And then he took that to two straight conference championship games. And then the GM just went apeshit. So I, I wouldn't put it on Rex. Is he going to get canned? I don't know. Like I said, I don't think this team... It is not out of the realm of possibility to see this team go 9-7. and seven. It is not out of the realm of possibility with their schedule, the way they've played the last couple of weeks, keeping up with Denver and New England, considered two of the powerhouses of the AFC. And essentially, the powerhouses of the AFC for the last decade have been New England and whatever team Peyton Manning's on. 
few seasons here and there where that wasn't the case. Obviously, they don't make it to the Super Bowl every year, but you, you know those two were good. So if they took it to the two threats in the AFC in consecutive weeks, one of them on short rest, I, it, nine and seven wouldn't be a surprise. So moving on to the Sunday games, the Buffalo Bills barely. <laughs> someone called them the cardiac Bills in an, in an article, and uh, hard to dispute that. 17-16 in a game that, before the game started, they should have had no problem winning. And then before that last minute of play, they had no business, like, they had no business winning. Like, they should have demolished this team. And when they, the way they weren't doing it, they shouldn't have been in it. And they somehow pull it out, which some people say is a sign of a great team. But I don't know who said it. Someone said that great teams don't win close games. They avoid them. And I'm not going to sit here and say the Bills are a great team. They are a talented team. And they need to start putting things together. That's what needs to happen. Sooner rather than later, this team needs to pull out. I mean, they're 4-3 and three right now. That's more wins than a lot of people gave them heading into the season. So... See what I mean? Like, rookie mode, I'm one for four against this team. Whatever. Um, if only they played like this in real life. We'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, this is a Minnesota team in transition, a little rougher. I mean, they weren't exactly going to be lighting it up this year. But you had to figure they'd be a little better than this. But you've, they've got a bust from what it looks like at left tackle. They've got... A rookie quarterback, and I don't care how we got spoiled, that doesn't mean anything. You're not just automatically going to get an amazing quarterback to start off their career. Um, you know, it, this is a team in transition. A new head coach, a very good defensive coach, but a new head coach. So he'll get that defense playing better than they are. So if... I don't know what their overall defense is. If they're the 20th ranked defense, then talent-wise, they're probably more like a bottom three. If they're top 10, they're middle of the pack. Like it's He's going to have them playing better than they should because the new system and because he, he was one of the best defensive coordinators in the league and it just took way too long for him to get a head coaching job. Um, you know, this is a game that should have been easily winnable for the, for the Bills, and it's not... And now the Jets are coming up. And this is the only time where I will say the 1-6 and six Jets should be the favorites heading to the 4-3 and three Bills. I believe this game is in... Is it in Buffalo or is it in New York? It doesn't matter. I mean, you can say same state. It's a five-hour drive. It's a significant difference. But it's still the same state, so there's still some home field. Well, actually, no, technically it's not because the two New York teams don't actually play in New York. Um... So, I don't know. I, I'm As a Bills fan, there are some easy games left on the schedule, but the Jets are a tough 1-6 team. The only upside is uh, Geno Smith has looked better, and he's played probably the best two games of his career the last two weeks. Those aren't Peyton Manning numbers. Those are just not terrible numbers. So, I'm not holding my breath to, for Geno to turn it around. Next up, we got the Baltimore Ravens, 29-7 to over the Falcons. Again, this one I got wrong, but again, this is one I knew the Falcons were going to lose. The Falcons, they say you need a really good quarterback. Well, they have that. They say you need good wide receivers and weapons from the half. He's got two of them. Hip-hop Roddy White was playing, had, a good, had himself a good game. They, and, you know, Julio Jones. And they usually win at home. This was an, this wasn't a home game, but this is not a very like this is a team that was thirteen and three only a few years ago. Last year they were supposed to be a Super Bowl favorite, and instead they ended up with the top what no, the number two pick or something number two number three up there in the draft. Like not a very good season. It's. <sighs> It's not a good year in Atlanta. It's not. And they're going to be... The problem is... When the Bills had a bad, have had a bad season... And they've had a lot of them. In fact, uh, this is season number 15. This might be the best one that they've had since like 2002. 
when the Bills have had a bad season, it stings a little, you know, it stings a little less because they're out of contention early. If the Bills go one and five, then they're already three games out in the division by then. The Falcons can go, you know, the Falcons are two and five. They're, they're game and a half back or two and a half games back of the division lead. Like, they are not out of it at all. Uh, Eric, you guys know Eric at this point. He put up a status on Facebook saying that the the Bucks had the best weekend in the NFC South because they were the only team who didn't lose. They didn't play, and it was advantageous to them. That's the Bucks are still very much so in contention for the what? <coughs> Did you guys see that play? That was amazing. I love some of the physics in this game. Nothing beats that vine where that guy just flew up 400 feet in the air, but. Um, the, you know, so Atlanta's going to be terrible all year, and we still got probably another three or four weeks before they're actually out of contention for anything. And that's what's terrible. They're going to be out of contention, barring some sort of turnaround, like the defense actually realizing, hey, we actually have to play football. Um, it's, it's not going to be a good year for Atlanta. It's not going to be a good... This might be another one. I'm not going to say that a team's going to go 7-9 and nine, win this division, but a team might go... I can't say they're going to go 7-9 and nine, win the division because the Panthers have tied, so it might be 7-8-1. and one. But tell, which one of these teams... If I'm doing a power ranking. I, I sort of referenced this uh, last week. Or, well, this weekend, anyways. Um... I think next week, yeah, next week would be about the halfway point. Most of the teams will be halfway, you know, through their schedule. They would have played eight games. So I'm going to do a midpoint power rankings. And I'll probably do like a three-quarter rank and then, you know, the final tally before the playoffs start, which won't mean anything. I don't rate it based on record because that's what the standings are for. I rate it based on how the teams have looked, who they've beaten, how they've gotten beat, which is why I can sit here and say the one in six Jets wouldn't make my bottom five. But there are a couple, let's see. But the 2-5 and five Falcons might. Uh, the 0-6 oh Raiders will not be at the bottom of my power rankings. That distinction, there are a couple of teams in play for that. Uh, the Jaguars, even though they won, are still in it. The 1-5 and five Bucks are in it. The 2-5 and five Redskins are definitely near the bottom of that pile because of all that other stuff. It's definitely, it's... It's going to be more opinion-based than record-based, but I can tell you right now that I don't think any team from the NFC South is going to crack the top 16. This is the division you're looking at as of right now. Things could turn around. We could be talking about it later in the year where the Panthers pull an 11-5 and record out of their ass. We don't know. The season's long. We're not even, you know, no team is at their halfway point right now. This is going to be a long season, maybe longer than usual for some. So we just got a long year of this. Two teams with the longest years coming up, though. That would be the uh, two and five Titans and the two and five Washington Redskins. Um, Kirk Cousins, what do you have? Three turnovers in the first half. He got benched for Colt McCoy. And Colt McCoy might be starting next week. That is what we are dealing with in Washington. And it's not like they've got Tom Brady coming back. They've got an RG3. It's RG3 coming back. That's who's coming back. How am I down a touchdown? What, does my defense play football? It... And they won. 19-17, to 17, they won. Because the, the Titans are starting Charlie Whitehurst. It is incredible. It is truly remarkable that this is what we're dealing with. Um, I don't want to talk about this game. I have no interest in talking about this game. I don't even think I looked at the box score. I only saw that Colt McCoy was a quarterback by the end of the game. That's all I saw. And 
Cousins wasn't injured. That's all I saw. So those teams, those both have two wins, and they will be below not only a couple one-win teams, but they might below the be below the zero-win team. The, it is remarkable how you can just get some of these wins, and it means absolutely nothing. Uh, next up, the surprise of the week. See, I picked the Rams in the wrong week. I thought they were going to beat San Francisco, and that didn't happen. Instead, they saved their A game for the Seattle Seahawks with, I mean, 28-26. It's not like they blew them out. You know, they didn't manhandle them, but they pulled. It's a desperate team. When the desperate teams play top teams in the league, you're going to see some shit that you've never seen before. That punt play, and I saw this, you know, I saw the gif on Grantland, and I read, you know, uh, was that Mays or Barnwell who wrote that one? And he turned around and said that, because I guess Chicago, it must have been Mays. Chicago did it a couple of years ago. And it's true. How do you not talk to your team and say, I'm punting the ball to the left or I'm punting the ball to the right? So the entire team run towards Tavon Austin, for who, for all intents and purposes, is their punt returner. And instead, it's Stedman Bailey who gets the ball, runs it up the sideline 90 yards for a touchdown because nobody's near him. They pulled a trick play based entirely off the ignorance of the punting team, who, by the way, chose where the ball went. I don't know. Punts are kind of picky, you know. It's sort of like, th you know, sometimes the ball can just hit your foot. It's sort of like hitting a baseball. You know where you intend to send it, but you're not going to hit that spot every single time. Um... It's <laughs> Seattle fans are freaking out. It's like, oh, I don't. I thought they went eleven and five last year. They went thirteen and three. So they're already at last year's uh, loss total. That that said, D Stoker, we're down by a touchdown. You're gonna drop a fucking pass on four? Uh, are you fucking kidding me? So, um, I didn't call the time. What the hell was that shit? Um. I might not be going to the Super Bowl after all. Oh, wait, no, they fumbled the punt. Never mind. We still got a chance. Um, I, <laughs> don't panic, Seahawks fans, but it, it's not going to be a magical ride like it was last year. Um, it's, just, it's a division game, and they were on the road. It just happens sometimes. You know, the Dallas Cowboys, through the first seven games, look really, you know, Throw that San Francisco out, and they're the best team in the league. you got to keep that San Francisco loss in the back of your mind, though. But if you threw that out, they're 6-0, and and they've dominated just about every game they played. Well, okay, that's not true, because guess who they had trouble with? Oh, that would be the Rams. The Rams are... Oh, man, they, they're they just a couple weapons away from actually being a contender in a tough division. It just goes to show. I mean, they're a game behind the Seahawks right now. And what is it? So they're 2-4. and four. They're a game behind the Seahawks and a game and a half behind the 49ers. That's the separation. This is a team that lost their starting quarterback in the preseason. You... <sighs> That's just how it goes, man. That's just how it works, how the NFL goes. I mean, it. do I think the Rams will be in the Super Bowl or anything this year? Hell no. Hell no. Do I think they'll contend for a wild card spot? No. I mean, maybe through week, you know, maybe week 12 they're officially eliminated from wild card contention and not like week, you know. Clearly they're not mathematically eliminated now. But at the end of the day, they're still in last place in their division. So, it, what are you going to do? But, <sighs> man, that just sucks for Seattle. But, you know, shit happens. I feel a little more con Every time a close game or a loss happens, and they didn't look great against... Um, during the Russell Wilson show against the Redskins, they still didn't look great if you f if you're playing maybe 25 of the other teams in the NFL in that game they lose. 
So it's... They've gotten some breaks in their favor, too. It's not a matter of everything's against Seattle this year. They've gotten some breaks. And it's still, at the end of the day, if you had to put money on it... I figured it out. It's the linebackers on their team. It's because all of their freaking linebackers are rated like a 95. That's what it is. And they all blitz all the time. So here they come. All right, cool. Well, I got a touchdown anyways. Fuck you, Alden Smith. I don't even know what Alden Smith got suspended for. Um, so moving on. Jacksonville Jaguars win 24-6 to over the Browns. And everyone's like, oh, Alex Mack's a big difference. No, it's... The Browns, the kind of football they play is not... They were riding high. Like, I mean... Joe Thomas is doing interviews on Mike and Mike. Like, they were riding high off that win last week. And it's like, dude, you did it over a Steelers team who people aren't even sure if their head coach is going to be there next year. He will be, by the way. Whoever started that rumor is an asshole. But I, I wish I had picked the Jaguars. That's all I'm going to say. I wish I had picked them because I, had, I told you guys last week, when you're – Ofer, when you're winless, every team, every game is your Super Bowl. Every game is a must win because you need that chatter to stop. And they've gotten blown out quite a few times, too. Like, the Raiders, the talk's not going to come for a while. And that's because they've been competitive in a lot of them. They, you know, was it a two-point loss to New England... Uh, last second field goal against the Chargers last week beat them. They've been competitive in almost every game they've played. I'm trying to think if there's one. I, I can't remember a blowout, but they've been tough. So that's why they're sort of not getting to talk as much as the 0-6 Jaguars. Um, even though, of course, uh, they fired their head coach already, which, I mean, I don't blame them. That's just... I don't. I don't think. That, I don't think the coach was any good. I really don't. And I'm sorry. I'm sure he's a better head coach than I could ever be. But at the end of the day, you know the Raiders are a tough team. And Tony Sperano has had success in the NFL. Granted, the, the Wildcat was required, but he was. That shows creativity to me. You can say it's a fad, or whatever you want. It is a fad. It's absolutely a fad. But it won him a bunch of games. Okay, good. So now Kaepernick is just going to throw me the ball. So now, all right. I kind of just want to run the clock. This is going to fail. Oh, wow. He he got, okay, never mind. Cool. Um. So, yeah, Cleveland, I'm not going to say your season is over. But I'd I'd scale it back a bit. You're back in last place. You didn't win some of the close games you should have won. You're gonna, I mean, New England got blown out by the Chiefs. And people I still didn't turn injuries off? God damn it. New England gets blown out by the Chiefs. And people are talking about their season's over. I didn't think their season was over. I thought it was just like, okay, this isn't the dominant Patriots. They, they, they are 5-2. and two. So, one loss, it doesn't matter what the score is. A loss is a loss, a win is a win. If you finish 10-6 and six and you have a point differential of plus 5, does anybody care about the fact that you barely won your games and got blown out in your losses? Or do they care about the fact that you won 10 out of the 16 games you had to play? So, don't worry about that. You lost the game to a team that was desperate because they're going to be desperate. You know, they're not going to be as desperate anymore. Every every other team in the league just breathed a little sigh of relief. No one talks about that storyline, though, but every other team in the league just breathed a little sigh of relief because now they're not over. They got a little confidence, yes, but they lost. That fire is no longer burning in their belly. So it, the Jaguars just became an even easier out all because the Browns lost to them. Um, next up, 
Speaking of teams that I've doubted, the Indianapolis Colts. So San Diego had the first shutout of the year two weeks ago against the Jets. And then last week, the Eagles shut out the Giants. Well, it, it, are you seeing how it increased? Like you went the New York, you know, the New York, the one and six New York team. Now the three and four New York team got shut out. So, Indianapolis is like, hey, remember at after week three and week four, and everyone was crowning the Bengals as the best team in the NFL? Let's shut them out 27 and nothing and see how you guys like it. Um, Andrew Luck, I'm still convinced he's, he's... The Colts have covered up for the last decade and a half, two decades. They have covered up shoddy like a shoddy roster with outstanding quarterbacks Peyton Manning and we're going to talk about him later on is going to go down as the greatest statistical quarterback in NFL history and I think that puts him right in line to be in the top two or three of all time especially if he gets one or two more rings then you definitely got to have that convert if he can equal Brady on rings by the time his career is over I'm not saying that's plausible but I'm saying right now that they're my number one team I picked them to win a Super Bowl, and I have even more confidence in that today than I did at the beginning of the season. It, he might go down as the greatest quarterback of all time. And now Andrew Luck, everyone thought he was going to be really good. Like, he was the first overall pick. Consensus, first overall pick. And the things he's doing this year, it is incredible. It really is. Is he the best quarterback in the NFL right now? No, but he's clearly in the top five. I would put him ahead of Breeze. I would. Put, I think if I did my top five quarterbacks, in no particular order right now, I'd have to think about it a little more to actually get you a real number. But, I mean, Brady and Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Phillip Rivers, Andrew Luck, Russell Wilson somewhere outside of that, K Kaepernick sort of a little inconsistent. Tony Romo's played well ever since that first game. Um, who else we got? Who else we got? Alex Smith is another one that looks good since the first game. Uh, Cam Newton's looked really good. Um, Nick Foles hasn't. Eli hasn't. Matthew Stafford hasn't. Jay Cutler hasn't. Yeah, okay, Kyle Orton. Like, after that is when you sort of get into the Dalton and the... Um, Flacco. Well, actually, Flacco would be higher up. I think Flacco would probably be seven. But those are my, you know, top five quarterback right now. And not that I think that the team would be 0-7 right now. But I think instead of 5-2, and they'd be 2-5. and Without Andrew Luck, probably 1-6. and He's incredible. But I think what this should bring up more... Heap all the credit you want on the Colts because they deserve all of it and then some. What happened to the Cincinnati Bengals team that they went from 3-0 and to 3-2-1? and And it's just 0-2-1 and since the bye. All of this regression that people thought was going to happen, they lost both of their coordinators, who, by the way, their teams aren't doing too great, though Mike Zimmer, I would never put that on him. And Jay Gruden, I feel like he got hired because of his last name and not for being who he is. Um, I just... It, it, you got to question Cincinnati. I mean, they're missing A.J. Green and they were missing Marvin Jones. You know, Marvin Jones is gone for the year. A.J. Green missed the game. There are the Broncos right there. It's... What happened to you, Cincinnati? What the hell happened? I don't understand. Um, you know, it's it's rough. It's rough. But they'll turn it around, but they've, they've got to do it quick. Because all of a sudden, no team in that division is under 500. No team is under 500. The Browns are 3-3 three and, three and in last place. Which, oh, by the way... The Panthers are 3-3-1 three, three, and one and winning the NFC South. It's um, 
it's not lo- you know the Bengals are now two games behind in their division. So it's it is tough to be Cincinnati right now, but they do have some of the talent to turn around, and when they get AJ Green back, they should be fine. Should be. But um a lot of bad things happen on should be's. Jesus, get one more point in throw power got me up to ninety nine. Sweet. Now I'm about to get a buttload of experience after this game. Alright, guys. Here we go. It's the Super Bowl. Let, let's see if it's going to be as tough as this last game I just had. 42-35. Jesus. Um, but anyways, alright. Next up, Miami winning 27-14 to over the Bears in a game that I had a lot of difficulty picking because I don't like either one of these teams. There are way too many parallels. They're both kind of very similar in that they either underachieve or overachieve depending on the week. Um... So I'm not surprised by this result at all. I guess we got bad Jay Cutler. Uh, Brandon Marshall was ripping him after the game. And then Trestman comes out and says, well, he wasn't specifically ripping him. You guys are three and four. You're falling back. You're both, you know, you're two games back of the two teams up top. You're closer to the bottom than the top. And you haven't, Jay Cutler hasn't even got injured and been put on the injured reserve yet. That That's going to happen. It, it just, it does. It happens every year. What? <sighs> the problem is, and I've been doing a lot of thinking about this, because I always try, you know, everyone's like, I don't know if it's Bill Simmons. I don't know who it is. I listen to too much sports shit now. Um, whenever I listen to something, it's obsessively. So at one point I was listening to the Game Grumps, Nate and Dookie, uh, Nappy, Duncan Knee Deep. Uh, Shofu, Giancarlo, like all of those gameplay guys at once. And now I flipped it. Now I'm listening to just sports podcasts and radio. So I don't know who it was who said it, but everyone's like, oh, how did the, you know, how can the Bills give up two first round picks to go and get Sammy Watkins? And it's like, well, he's a great playmaker. And they keep saying they're a cold weather team. And it's, it made everything kind of make sense for me. Because in the snow, throwing the football is increasingly difficult. And that's why the Patriots, when they were winning Super Bowls, were more defensive. And that's why Belichick fit for them. That's why the Steelers and Bears have historically been defensive teams, because they play in the freaking cold. The Packers just do whatever the hell they want, because they're the freaking Packers. Um, and even then, it's not like Brett Favre was completion percentage, man. I think he was something like a 59% passer on his career. So, it, um, you know, it's tough. I've always said, ever since the whole thing went down in, uh, in Denver, when they shipped out Jay Cutler, I didn't really like him in Denver either. And then after that, like, then he kind of started becoming a douchebag and he married that reality star. He's still dating her. I don't know what the hell their relationship is. I don't even know if they're still together. Uh, you know, he's just... I've never liked him, and I can never put my finger on it. There's something about him I didn't like. I've never met him as a person, and I'm sure there's a good chance I meet if I ever met that guy, the greatest guy I'd ever met, become one of my best friends. There's always that possibility, but as a professional football player, him and Cam Newton, I sort of put in their own little zone of players, sort of like, I, I don't... You're talented, but why don't I like you? Cam Newton, it's because he's just... he's. A very terrible loser. He's a very mopey, you know, not your team leader kind of loser. Jay Cutler has all of, all the tools in the world, both on the field and his own natural talent. And he can't make the most of it. And Tressman, everyone's calling Tressman a guru. You're talking, he got, Tressman got... Two first-round picks at wide receiver, right? Was Sh- was Jeffrey a first-round pick? I can't remember. I feel like he was, but it's not like people are surprised that Alshon Jeffrey got good. I just don't. Th- I think they were expecting him. You know, they just wanted him to be a number two, and now he's the one B or one A, depending on how you look at it. And Jay Cutler was a first-round quarterback. Tressman got handed this guy, and it's you know he's just made him better. It's sort of like. 
when everyone was saying that um, Mike McCoy did wonders for Philip Rivers last year, and that's carried over into this year, it's like, do you ever think maybe Philip Rivers just had one bad year? Like, 2012 was just a really bad year for him. It happens sometimes. The guy's 34 years old. Sometimes, you know, I'm 28 years old, and I feel like crap sometimes. I can only imagine being 32 and a professional quarterback getting hit a lot because they've never historically had a great offensive line. They've had a decent offensive line, but not outstanding. Um, nothing like the Chiefs of the early 2000s or anything. So, just the Bears, they, that defense is terrible. That offensive line isn't much better. Matt Forte is a stud. Um, I remember Matt Forte and Ray Rice used to get lumped in a lot. That's come a long way now, hadn't it? Even though Ray Rice is the one with the ring. You could argue that Ray Rice had nothing to do with that team. And if you put Matt Forte on that team... It's not as close a game. Um, you know, there's the talent around there, and I, I don't think Jay Cutler is terrible. I think it's just the reason why Brett Favre thrives. Number one was a different passing era where efficiency wasn't nearly as valued. You never had game manager, even as a bad thing. A game manager nowadays means somebody who doesn't turn the ball over can get you, you know, if it's a third and four, he'll get you five yards, which is someone like Alex Smith for most of the season anyways. Whereas you got guys like Peyton Manning where it's third and four. He's trying to figure out which one of his running backs out hit in the backfield to make it third and four, and he's going to throw you a 35-yard bomb just because he's so pissed off about it. So, like a play like that, second and four, and I'm going to throw a 20-something-yard touchdown. You know, that's what people expect nowadays out of a quarterback. Jay Cutler is just, he's going to turn the ball over. I believe on his career, he still has thrown more touchdowns and interceptions. That's about all you're going to get out of that guy. You know, he's in his 30s now. It, what do you expect to change from him? Yeah, okay. You know, everyone likes to say, oh, well, Kurt Warner did that with the Ravens. Like, Kurt Warner with the Ravens, had already won a Super Bowl ring and an MVP earlier in his career. He went to the Giants. They were terrible. There was a reason the Giants had the number two overall pick. He went there. They weren't very good. He got shuffled around because they wanted to start Eli. And I don't blame him with what they had to give up for him. Um, or were they, were they number four overall pick? Now I don't remember. But they weren't a very good team. And then he, you know, got on the Arizona team that re literally just had never had a really good quarterback in its existence, pretty much. I, I mean, I'm not going to go back and talk about the St. Louis Cardinals, but, you know, it. what do you got before that? You got Jake Plummer, who didn't really become a good quarterback until he left for Denver. You had Josh McCown, which we see what he's doing right now. And then Kurt Warner comes in, and it's like, hey, wait a second. And I don't remember if – I think Anquan Bolden was there at the time. And even if he wasn't, Larry Fitzgerald, that's when, that was his coming out party. You know, they just lost on one play in the Super Bowl. I, you're not going to get a career renaissance out of somebody who was never that great. Jay Cutler has always been very good. Jay Cutler has been a B type of quarterback, you know, a lot of – I would gladly take him on the Bills if it came out in Chicago, traded him to the Bills for, you know, E.J. Manuel and a second-round pick. I wouldn't be pissed off about that. You know, I might start having non-flashbacks about Ryan Fitzpatrick, but I wouldn't really be that ticked off about it. Um, so I don't know why people think that they're going to change – Cutler, why people are surprised that Cutler throws a lot of interceptions and makes bonehead plays. It's the same, it's well I can't even say, it's not even the same thing as Tony Romo. Tony Romo did the same thing for years. He's had his best year of his career right now because they have an offensive line and they have a running game. If you replace Troy Aikman with Tony Romo I bet you they still get their Super Bowl rings they might even get another one. And that might sound blasphemous in saying it, 
But I do think that Tony Romo had to do way too much because he played on a terrible team. And now they finally get it. People are going to be so pissed at me that I just said that I would take Tony Romo over Aikman. I wouldn't take him over Aikman. I'm just saying they're not necessarily interchangeable. But you can't deny that Troy Aikman had more talent. Way more talent around him. Before Des Bryant, who was the best wide receiver that Tony Romo ever threw to? Roy Williams, Miles Austin. I mean, who was the best running back he had? I, you know, I, I can't. Uh, what the? I don't even remember any of their goddamn names. The kid from Arkansas or whatever, who was out of the league. Who, of course, got drafted because Jerry Jones is an Arkansas guy. Oh, good. No, that's okay. Just throw a key interception in the red zone in the Super Bowl. No, that's cool. We got this. Um, Peyton Manning delivers. I'm just saying. Bears fans, that's what you got out of Jay Cutler. He's still a better quarterback than you've had at any point during your existence, and don't you dare start defending Jim McMahon to me. I don't care how much you like the Super Bowl shuffle. That team won because the 85 Bears had the greatest defense, or at least definitely in the conversation, of all time. And defenses do win championships. And if you want proof of that, the Seahawks just won the Super Bowl last year. With a defense that, by the way, is not one of the... It's not in the conversation for one of the great defenses of all time I would put it in the conversation for top 10 but it's a step below I think those 2000 Ravens the 85 Bears the uh, Steelers teams of old you know it's a step below them I feel like I missed one right there I guess the uh, 2002 Bucks had a pretty good defense too but that was definitely a more consistent thing like the Seahawks just sort of had one magical year of defense the Ravens had a freaking what basically the entirety of Ray Lewis's career it was about their defense the Bucks it was a good 10 year stretch with their defense the Bears don't have one of those and they need one really bad I started off with a different point for this and now I can't remember why why did I start talking about defenses oh right because Jay Cutler, yeah, Shane, Mc Jim McMahon, right, gotcha. Okay, sorry, it's uh, it's almost bedtime for me. Um, this is what happens when you do a podcast by yourself. I'm not Colin Coward. I don't remember everything. I'm not that intelligent. Uh, next up, moving on, we have the uh, Detroit Lions last second beating the New Orleans Saints in a game that was closer than it probably should have been. Although I did realize after I made my picks and looked back at it, that New Orleans was playing in a dome. And they're a great home team, but they're also a good dome team. Would have been their best game so far. I know it's tough to pick because they're 2-4, and four, but they barely lost in Atlanta in a dome, and they barely lost here in a dome. They're a very good dome team. So it doesn't surprise me that it was this close. Um, although I will say the over-under on this game I think was 52 points at one point, and then it, they dropped it to 48. If you took that, you still won. That Last year, this game, the over-under on that would have been 100 points, and I don't think anyone would have taken it. Um, this is... Uh, the Lions still don't look good, besides Golden Tate, who... I under, I'm glad he went to this team to finally go into an offensive system that would sort of let him show off his talents. Unfortunately, Matthew Stafford, once, once uh, Megatron gets back, he's only going to want to pass it to Calvin Johnson. That's, he's only going to pass it to him. So, oh, Jesus Christ. The, uh, the, the Broncos just blitz 15 people at me. Um... So this game was definitely closer than I thought it would be when I made my predictions and then after the fact. Okay, please tell me Stoker is going to be gone after this because he is terrible. Um, 
I'm going to have to adjust that drops rate. This is ridiculous. See, Vincent Jackson doesn't drop a ball even when he's getting tackled. Was that third down? That was third down. You know what? It's a Super Bowl. YOLO. Um, so the Lions, you're, they're 5-2, and two and they're not looking anywhere where they what they should be. The worst part of their game right now should be their greatest strength, and that is their offense. And that defense... And Dominican Sue, this might be a swan song in Detroit. Enjoy him while he's there. Because he's going to go stomp on faces in other stadiums now. That's just a thing that's going to happen. Let me throw the ball for seven seconds, but I... Okay, good. Game likes just take the game... You know, I'm on the one-yard line. There's seven seconds left, and I've got all three timeouts. The game will sometimes say, no, you're done. We're just going to kick a field goal now. There we go. Um... And the Saints, I picked them to go to the Super Bowl and represent the NFC. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I have zero confidence in that pick because I don't think, as of right now, I don't think this team makes the playoffs, let alone makes it to the Super Bowl. I don't even think they get in. They've got to win their division at this point now because right now you're wild card teams. You've got the 5-2 and two Packers and the 5-1 and one Eagles. Those are your two wild card teams. And, by the way... That means as of right now, San Francisco and Seattle would not be making the playoffs. They would be out. So the Saints have to win that division to get in. And I don't know if they can do it. Because Cam Newton is playing really well. It's the rest of the team around him that's sort of suffering. But they've still got a top five defense that could turn it around. And they just don't have any running backs right now. They have no running backs and they like to run the ball. And they've got a new wide receiving core, and they got to develop them and get some chemistry going. Um, speaking of which, Green Bay Packers win 38-17 to over those same woeful Carolina Panthers. And at this point, Carolina's just got to play to win games. It doesn't really matter who they beat. They can run. It, that's a gr the brilliant thing about ties is the the head-to-head -head, uh, tiebreakers no longer apply to them. All they have to do is just win, and they'll be either a half game above or a half game behind people. That's all they have to do. So, you know, if they if they end up losing every game for the rest of the season, go 3-12-1, and one, and then the next worst team in the league is 4-12, and 12, no coin flip, they get the first-round pick. Um, I mean, if they didn't have the tie... You could be talking about two potential division winners. Because how much, how much confidence do you have in the Lions to win their division right now? I have more confidence in them this year than I had last year. Because I think Caldwell is a better head coach than Schwartz was. I say this with Schwartz on my team, responsible for arguably the only thing that's going to help my team win games and get to the playoffs. And they didn't look too hot against the Patriots last week. Um... But the Packers just, I still, you know, they look good one week. And, uh, at the end of the day, they're winning games. They're 5-2. and two. At the end of the day, they've won four straight now. And at some point, it's easier to say it about New England. But I don't know how the Packers are doing because they don't, it's, Eddie Lacy got all this hype. And it's same old Packers. It's like, oh, you got that guy as your number one? Well, your number two running back is James Starks, and he still might be your best running back. But don't you dare put him as the number one running back because then he will suck. Um, Packers just not allowed. It's like, oh, I'm on green left. Well, that's it. You're done. Um, with the Panthers, it's just they're in the right division at the right time. They are struggling. They are regressing. And it doesn't matter because they're still in first place with a game and a half lead over a team that I just said wouldn't make the playoffs. So, Carolina, you still got to hold your head up even after a loss, you know? You know who else has to hold their head up after a loss? So that would be the San Diego Chargers who lost 23-20 to against the Chiefs. The only problem, and you've got two problems right now. San Diego, next week, they get to play 
the Broncos. I don't remember. What, let me see. Wait, I have the schedule here. It is. Oh, it's the Thursday night game in Denver. So that's a loss. Sorry. At least they're coming from. I think they're actually close. It's a shorter flight because they're coming. If they're coming from Kansas City. Um. They they needed this win because I mean and they could come out and beat Denver next week who knows San Diego has looked good but Denver is just like I mean does that loss to Seattle does that still seem as impressive keeping it close like that and coming from behind I don't know but every no team has gone undefeated since the seventy two Dolphins. And the last team that went undefeated for that long lost in the Super Bowl to a wild card team that probably shouldn't have been in the playoffs. Teams are going to win. And by the way, if you play that Super Bowl ten times, the Patriots are winning at nine. They just happen to play it that tenth time that day. Um, and it took a ridiculous catch with some guy who's out of the league sticking the helmet to the side of his head. Uh, or sticking the football to the side of his helmet. Um... San Diego, Kansas City's been tough all year. And I said it last, this is another game. Andy Reid, what does this make him now? 14-2 and two coming off a bye week in his career? This is just what he does. It doesn't matter. And he's had 6-10 and 10 teams mixed in there, and they still just win those games. It's, it's what they do. They just win coming off byes. So... Does Phillip Rivers' talk die down for being the MVP? Yeah, a little bit, but that's only because DeMarco Murray is on fire and all of a sudden Peyton Manning is going to get the hype again. So, San Diego, big game coming up this week because they could drop the 5-3. and three, And that still puts them in a comfortable position for the wild card because, say, they lose, they go to 5-3. and three, And then the Bills win and the Bills are 5-3. and three. They own the tiebreaker. I don't know. What are the Steelers doing? Steelers play... Uh, I don't have the whole schedule. Steelers are playing the Colts. That's probably a loss. I do think the Colts are going to lose a couple more times this year, but I don't think this week is it. The, so, San Diego could go to 5-3 and three and still be in a comfortable position for the wild card spot. So, it, but it's still a big win if they want to be taken seriously as Super Bowl contenders. And that's the big thing. They made the playoffs last year. They snuck in at the end, and they looked great so far this year. And literally my number one team for next week, I w if under the assumption that the Chargers had won this week as well, my number one team in those power rankings was going to be whoever won that Denver um the Denver San Diego game. Sorry to the Cowboy to the Cow yeah, Cowboys. They would have been number 2 and number 3 would have been the loser. That's how it would have gone. And now I'm not so sure. You know. Because now it's sort of like, okay, well you beat, you know. The Chargers beat the Seahawks. But what else can you give me? Other than that, I think all their other the other teams they beat combined for four wins, something like that. So, I don't know. It is, it is going to be rough if, oh, it's going to be rough if that's how it goes for the Chargers, but they'll bounce back. Um, next up, we've got the Arizona Cardinals taking care of the Oakland Raiders, 24-13. to uh, the big story coming out of this game is that the Cardinals finally threw an interception. And it was the guy who was supposed to be starting the whole time. Carson Palmer throws an interception, should not be a headline, and yet that's that's it. Game number six, and they threw interception number one. And only one, by the way. They didn't throw a bunch. And like I said, this is, Oakland is a very competitive team. This is the NFL. There isn't that much of a gap between 0 and 6 and 6 and 0. And you're seeing it more so this year than any other se than any other season. Oakland will win. They're not going to go 0 and 16. They've played too many close games. 
they they could go six and ten and it wouldn't surprise. They go six and four over the next ten games and it wouldn't surprise me. I don't think they're gonna do it. But do they have Cleveland, Cleveland, who's Cleveland playing? Oakland's got Cleveland. I already wrote my picks in for next week, and I'm picking Oakland because I think Oakland looks better than Cleveland at some points. <coughs> um, I'm not going to pick Tampa Bay against Cleveland the, unless everyone else in the South loses again, and then all of a sudden Tampa Bay is playing to keep up in the division. But I just... How long of a field goal is this thing? Let me try it. 58. We can hit a 58-yarder. Come on. Come on. You can hit 58 yards. In Arizona, it's inside. Come on. You can do this. Come on. Wow. That's what I get for... Damn it, Acres. This was the most powerful leg of all time, and that's that's all you're getting me. Good job. Um, yeah, this Oakland team, they are going to upset somebody, and it's not going to be pretty when they do it. And like I said, they, I don't know what their schedule shakes out to, but they have the God-given talent. Well, not really the God-given talent. They're just, the way they play football, it wouldn't surprise me if they go on some sort of roll and rattle off a bunch of wins. Not to make the playoffs. You know, it's sort of like the Jets. The Jets are out of the playoffs, I think, because it... I mean, the Jets could go 10-0 and down the stretch, and it wouldn't surprise me looking at their schedule. I don't know the Raiders' schedule, but I know that Oakland and Denver are in there somewhere. I don't think they're going to win out. But if they go 6-10, and 5-11, and it's not going to surprise me. I don't think 0-6 is dooming them to 2-14 and in the number one overall pick. Couple plays go their way. They're at 500, and we're not even having this conversation. But, and by the way, if they're 500, I still think Dennis Allen is out of a job. Because <laughs> I think they wanted him gone, and they just couldn't figure out how to do it. Especially now that Harbaugh might be out. Um, but the Cardinals, I don't know how they're winning, but they're 5-1. and one. They're in first place by a comfortable margin right now in their division, and I don't understand how they're doing it. They've got a game and a half lead up on the 49ers and a two game lead up on the Seahawks. And three games up on the Rams if you want to talk. Oh, shit. I wanted to watch the Super Bowl celebration. I wish you would tell me if I won MVP. Sorry, guys. I totally wanted to watch that. I'll win the Super Bowl for the next season, which will probably be like week, um, week 16. Week f now, wait. Two games, four games a week. Four, eight, sixteen. This is one, two, three. Yeah, probably like week twelve. I'll be playing in another Super Bowl. I would assume. Yay! Yay! I did it. Um, I'll just take care of this while I talk about the rest of the games. So Arizona's doing it. I don't know how. I do think it's sustainable because I do believe in Bruce Arians, and I've said it the whole time. I think they'll fall off a little bit. I don't think they're going to win that division because I think the Seahawks are more than capable of storming back. But I... I'll take tight spiral, I guess. Yeah, if, I, if I'm rooting for... I don't know. If I'm a Cardinals fan, I'm feeling pretty comfortable right now. And I do think this is something that's sustainable. No matter how close some of the losses have been. Um, next up, the uh, Dallas Cowboys taking care of business. 31-21 over the Giants. DeMarco Murray breaks the record. He is now the only running back in NFL history with seven straight 100-yard games, another 29 carries. That man is going to explode. Like, like one of these days, you know, for wrestling fans out there, when Triple H blew out his quad in that uh, match against Chris Jericho and uh, Chris Benoit 
Oh, wait, we're not supposed to say his name. Um, when that happened, it was because he had been on, he, his body had, he'd put his body through way too much. Um, so I feel like something like that is going to happen to Marco Murray. We're just from the wear and tear. His, his leg is just going to explode, you know, and at least he'll have a record to share with his kids. But his leg will just explode, it'll fall off, and he'll never run again. I don't know when that's going to happen. Probably in week 16 when they're, you know, within a game of winning the division, and then that'll happen and they'll be out of it. Um, all right, so now that it's... Can people get to the free agents yet? We're going to make this simulate real life real quick. I'm going to take a little uh, little break. I'll talk about the Cowboys a little bit more. What is going to happen in the NFL, and this is going to happen anyways in real life. It'll never happen in the game. But uh, Adrian Peterson, free $12.7 million in cap room, but incur a penalty of $4 million. He was gone after this season before this whole child abuse scandal. And so I'll just release him and let people go about it. And because unless he's found guilty, he will be reinstated. And then just because I think Ziggy Wolf is a douchebag, I'm going to force him to retire. Retire from the league. Goodbye. All right, there goes that drama. Um. So, anyways, back to the Cowboys. It was a um, good win for them. I think Tony Romo had a pick or something in this game. I don't actually have the uh, the stats pulled up. I just have a printout with all the scores written on it. Um, you know, the Giants, they're missing Victor Cruz more than I think they'll let on. I've heard talk because the Bills deactivated Mike Williams last week, and then he was active this week because Marquise Goodwin was out, and then he never even got targeted on a pass. Um, and there's been talk about him getting traded to the Giants. That's not good. So, I don't think the Giants are in trouble. Odell Beckham is looking like at least a good red zone threat. I don't know if he'll ever put up the 1,500-yard seasons, but don't be surprised if he has 14 touchdowns this year. And the Giants, just they're 3-4 and four now. They just dropped two games in the division. And they couldn't afford to do that. I, I'm not saying this team is dead and buried, but it is going to be a. T they had to. They they had to win one of those games. They won neither of them, and now it's just a tougher road up to the top. They faced worse before. I mean, three and four. They're like we are exactly where we want to be. Time for another Super Bowl run. Um. But yeah, Dallas one looking good. Like I don't think they'll be at the top of my power rankings next week. I think if the Chargers beat the Broncos, the Chargers should get some consideration for being up there. And if the Broncos win, then I feel no reason not to put them up there, considering their only loss was a really close game. Meanwhile, the Cowboys had a terrible game against the 49ers, who don't look very good. Um, speaking of which, the Denver Broncos, 42-17 to over the 49ers, the fourth quarter was Brock Osweiler playing for the Broncos and Blaine Gabbert playing quarterback for the 49ers. The, obviously, the big one out of this one is Peyton Manning finally broke that record and is now the all-time passing touchdowns holder. Like he's going, He owns that record. He has more than Favre. And he probably could still have a good year plus in front. I mean, he's going to have the rest of this year. He might play... I mean, all signs would point to him playing next year and maybe even another season after that. Um, health, obviously. He has to have his neck inspected basically constantly, then they tell him whether or not he can play. It, it was sort of anticlimactic because the entire time when Favre was breaking those records five or six years ago or whenever it was, everyone kept saying he's just a placeholder, and once Peyton... Peyton just needed time. That's all he needed. As long as Peyton stayed healthy, he was going to own every single one of those records. 
And then he hurt his neck, and then everyone's like, oh, sh- but he hasn't owned the records yet. He can't. And it's he made up for lost time last year, and he's picking up pretty well so far now. Um... He, if he plays next year, he should get that passing yards record. Favre will still own the inter. Whoop. Favre will still own the interception record, though. Sorry, I hit my mic. I talk with my hands a lot, and there's a pop filter in front of my face. Um. Forty Niners. Like I knew. I'm waiting to. I haven't heard anything yet, though. I've heard no backlash from this game. I think it's just because it's all about Peyton right now, and it should be. He had that record wrapped up within, what, like the first five minutes of the second quarter. Uh, that's a pretty big loss, but because the Broncos are America's team, according to the recent poll, um, the 49ers sort of get a pass on that, but they still got blown out, and this is a team that everyone kept defending and saying, oh, this team could be could still be a Super Bowl contender. So... I I still think the 49ers make the playoffs at the end of the day. Um, and they have that tiebreaker over the Cowboys, and that could come into effect if the Cowboys, if and when the Cowboys lose again, and how many more they lose. Because, like I said, I still don't think they're going to be 15 and one. Because at this rate, that would require Demarco Murray with 464 carries, and if they go 15 and one doing that, um, that's game over. He's not going to be in the playoffs. He's going to be dead on the ground somewhere. Or at least in a coma, unconscious. Um, so we wrap it all up while we simulate through the draft. Um, last night's game, Pittsburgh Steelers win 30-24 over Houston. They were up 24-13 after rattling off, what, 24 straight points in the last five minutes or six minutes of the second or the first half? It, Ryan Fitzpatrick was Ryan Fitzpatrick. I don't know what anyone wants me to say. Um, <sighs> who did we draft? We traded away all of our draft picks. Ooh, wait, I'm liking him. Doug Martin, you might be out. I'm going to let this guy run the ball every time he comes in. Uh, 20 years old, 76 overall. Wait, where's his speed rating? Did I go right past that? I didn't show you for some reason. And then two, eh, player, two backups. I never understood why people trade away their picks. I'd like to know what they got for them. Um, you know, the Steelers, again, it's, they're 4-3. and three. They, as of now, are holding that coveted number seven spot in the playoff race because they have a better conference record than the Bills because the Bills are 4-3 and three and are 3-0 three and oh against the NFC North. They, they haven't played the Packers yet. Although, let's be honest, that Packers game could go either way. I might have to get tickets to that one now. Ah, it's a long eight-hour drive, though. But... You know, it, this is two teams who now it's fit, like JJ Watt. I love JJ Watt. I don't know what he did in this game. I think the fact they scored 24 points that quickly, I think everyone sort of forgot JJ Watt played in this game. Um. So, I'm sorry, but I don't think either of these teams make any noise later on. I think losing that game to the Colts was a nail in the coffin for the the chances at the division title for Houston. And I think now dropping, taking that 3-0 start now being under 500. I think that was the nail in the coffin for their wild card chances. Because now, what do you got? You got you got the Bills at 4-3, and three, the Dolphins at 3-3, three and three, the Bengals 3-2-1, and one, the Steelers at 4-3, and three, Browns 3-3. Three and three. Uh, Chargers five and two, and the Chiefs at three and three, all ahead of them right now in the standings, and some of them by half a game, some of them by one game. That's a lot of teams you have to come, you have to jump over. Not that it's impossible. In one week they could be ahead of all of them, but the way they're playing, do you have any confidence in that? Oh wait, maybe it's not over because they got the Tennessee Titans next week. 
So maybe all hope is not lost for the uh, Texans. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button up top or down below or wherever the hell it is. If you want to hear more of these, more of my Black Nuzlocke, which will be resuming. Granted, it's going to have a long-ass export time, but hopefully soon. Um, subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you want to yell at me, you know what? Let me know. I'm doing my power rankings next week. Let me know in the comments who you think should get some consideration for being higher up than maybe I would put them based on their record. So, for instance, if you've got a good argument as to why I shouldn't put the Tennessee Titans as the number 31 team in the league. Um, or if you've got a reason why maybe the Seahawks are a bottom 16 team. You know, let me know in the comments and a, I will take it into consideration. Because I don't know everything. I don't think anyone does. Something get pointed out to me. You know, the Saints, they're 2-4. and four. They look pretty bad. But Drew Brees is hurt. So maybe they'd be better if he wasn't hurt. Um, you know, maybe Colt McCoy is the answer at quarterback. Maybe they'll trade RG3 and Kurt Cousins and start Colt McCoy. That's not going to freaking happen at all. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.